Hello everybody, welcome to Life According to Logan, and today I'm going to talk about impossible loads. I am on my second one, actually it's in the back, and I'm sitting here waiting to see what they want me to do with it, and I'll get into that in just a second, but what I mean by impossible load, and why this is my second one. So, uh, previously, a couple weeks ago, maybe even a month and a half ago or so, I got put on a load that was impossible for a solo driver to do. No matter what I could have done, it was impossible for me to get it there on time. So I'm under another load like that, but I think that there was a glitch in the system because when it was offered to me, it was after they did that first maintenance, and then there were some glitches going on, and then they had to do a second one. And so it was like about an hour to, or two before they were going to shut down for that um, maintenance on that right so when I got the load I could have swore that from the shipper to the receiver and it was a 22 hour window to get it there was like a 500 mile drive which is completely doable um, the receiver it picked up at 6 a.m. it was a drop and hook over there and then I had 22 hours to get it over to the receiver, which is, I'm only four and a half miles away from it now, um, at 7 a.m. So one was 6 a.m., the other was 7 a.m., and then plus I went from central time zone to, um, central time zone to eastern. 22 hours um, to get it there. So I was at a loves only 60 miles away from the shipper, and I was going to go there because they had overnight uh, parking, but I have Buddy and a lot of places like that with food don't really allow the dog out on the lot. And I was looking at the lot, and it's like right next to the building. and So I thought, you know what? It's only an hour away. I'll have plenty of time. It's it's okay. So um, the that night before I went to bed, I always go over my notes again you know like I go over them a lot but I went over them again and as I scroll through I seen like 700 and I'm like wait what so I went back and I looked and it was 701 miles from the shipper to the receiver and I'm like how am I supposed to do that but I was so tired I'm like well obviously they think I can do it you know and it just wasn't processing but I kept I was worrying about it so I got up the next day I left early to the shipper got in and got out of there and was driving and I drove until I had like 23 miles left or 23 minutes left on my clock I parked at a rest area and I get and I wrote them and I said you know what I still have 230 miles left there's no way I'm gonna get there on time I I apologize I did my best um, but there's no way I could have done this you know I sat there for the night they said well give us your ETA we'll see about moving the appointment and in the notes for this particular receiver, it said, please get there on time because it takes days to reschedule. So I'm like, I'm thinking, ah. So they said, we'll get there as soon as you can and see if they can work you in. So that's what I did. The next morning I woke up as, er as early as I could to still get enough sleep. I was very tired, but I got enough sleep. I left as soon as I had time on my clock, did my pre-trip and everything and left. And then I got to the receiver now again, my appointment was at 7 a.m. and I got to the receiver about 9.38. And they called to see if they could work me in and, and they couldn't. They said, sorry, you're gonna have to reschedule. So I came over to this pilot. I came over here on the 22nd. It is now the 23rd. And then um, before I left, I got a hold of them and said, hey, sorry, they can't work me in. You gotta reschedule it. I'm gonna go park find safe parking and then when I got here I let them know okay I'm on a pilot about four and a half miles away so it took a couple hours I had to reach back out to them and check in and they said uh, yeah the new appointment is for October 31st at like 10 30 p.m. and I'm like hmm now it's the 22nd and I and this so now this isn't due there until the 31st so I was like well am I supposed to sit under this and and just not make any money for two weeks or what's going on so uh, anyways it's kind of late I guess to make a long story short but it is now the 23rd uh, it is about 1130 I when I woke up about 9 I wrote them and said hey what's going on with this load because yesterday when I was talking to my fleet manager he said well they're trying to figure out if they want me to take it to a drop yard or take it all the way back to the shipper 
So I said, okay, well, I'll just chill for the night, go to bed, I'll wake up and check it in the morning. So I, I wrote them about 9.30 or something when I like really woke up and was getting ready to start my day, take Buddy outside. I just got back in from the shower, which thankfully I had points to get a free shower. And so I still haven't heard back from them. So I think after I'm done um, here, I'm going to go ahead and give it another like 30 minutes and then make a call and see what I'm doing with this load. Um, yeah, so this is yet another one that my my uh, dispatch confirmed that yeah, it was it was impossible for any one solo driver to do. And I said, I'm really sorry, you know, um, I did my best. And he's like, hey, you did what you could do, you know. So um, I, th I have to trust my own memory, but it's hard to trust a memory because human memory isn't the greatest, especially mine. I could have swore when I accepted it, it was only 500 miles and I'm pretty sure that sales and um, you know my dispatch wouldn't give me something a second time you know that it was impossible to do so I don't feel bad about it anymore I just want to get back out on the road and start making some money because in November I'm going home to to visit my friends and family and to vote for the holidays because I plan on working all through the holiday um, I want to make as much money as I can um, get myself not only now I'm trying to like how do I put this? I'm trying to like start saving money now, right? I got my finances as far as all my bills are getting paid on time now, but now I'm playing catch up so that I can start my emergency fund, which still hasn't been started, but you know, like I said, I'm, I'm playing catch up and I still need my business account and uh, go from there. Now, one thing I do want to talk about is I want to go tanker. And I wasn't sure at first if I was going to just stay in Reefer for a full year before going to Tanker or if I was just going to go to Tanker as soon as I could, which I have to be in this seat, you know, seat A they call it, um, for six months before I can do that. So that would be February of next year. Um, I'm thinking I might go ahead and transfer over at that point. We'll see when I get closer. Technically, at that point, I will have been doing reefer for 10 months if you include my um, training time. But we'll see. We'll see where, where I'm going. But I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and transfer over sooner rather than later. Uh, I don't know that the money is going to be in any better over there. I don't know if I'm going to stay lease over there or if I'm just going to go company. But, yeah, that's my current goal. So we're going to go ahead and see what they're going to have me do with this load, and I'll check in with you after I found that out. Hi, and welcome back. It is now, let's see, October 24th. The other day, I wrote to, to dispatch like I'm pretty sure I had said in the last video, and um, I didn't hear back for several hours. So I went ahead and I wrote them again because I figured... If they're not getting back to my messages, there must be, you know, a lot going on, um, emergency situations possibly, things, you know, and I'm not in an emergency situation. The load's back there safe. I'm out several times a day to make sure everything's good. I'm in safe parking, you know, I, I'm not in an emergency situation. So I'm not calling because I know they're working on it. At least that's what I keep getting told. So I went ahead and wrote. And um, I heard back from my dispatch uh, about two hours later saying, sorry, Logan, I'm, I'm looking into it. And I never heard back since. This morning when I woke up, I, um, I wrote again, again about 9.56 a.m. according to this. Um, that's Eastern Standard Time, so it was like almost 9 there. And uh, it's now 12.37, and I still haven't heard back. Um, again, like I'm not in an emergency situation, so I'm, I'm going to give it today. But if I don't hear back again, then tomorrow I'm just going to call when I wake up. I think that's more than enough time for them to see if they may need me to drop it off at one of the drop yards nearby. There's one like 80 miles away, and there's another one that's like 180 miles away, according to dispatch, because I've never been to them. Um, 
or if I'm taking it back to the shipper or if I have to sit here under it until the 31st. But last night to, to help distract myself from thoughts, which worked for a little while, I, I watched two alien abduction movies, uh, two really good ones. One is called The Fourth Kind. It's made out to make you believe that it's actually based on a true events, but it's not, but it's still really good. I watched Fire in the Sky, which is based on a true story. However, Hollywood took their liberties with it. And so a lot of the really creepy, freaky stuff that happens to him in the movie didn't really happen to him. And then you can look into that. But uh, before I get into the rest of what's going on with this load that I know of so far, if you like alien like movies, especially anything that's alien abduction based on true story or otherwise it's really good and creepy and, and acted really well in a good storyline, let me know in the, the um, box down below and I'll look into it because I'm always looking for something new but I never know. Like stuff will come up but I never know if it's going to be any good or not. So I don't want to rent it, you know. <laughs> But anyways, I'm sitting here under this load, and last night after those movies were over, I was very tired, you know, because I had spent all day here just doing my walking and, and going in and out of the pilot. They probably think I'm trying to live here or something. And then I just started getting, you know, down and stuff. I'm just going to be perfectly honest. Uh, tomorrow, when I get paid, I'm trying to, like, collect my thoughts so that I see this properly. Tomorrow, when I get paid, I'm going to get zero. Big old goose egg. On top of that, I'm going to be in the negative at least $1,000. Because the load that I took in, the beginning of the week was only 800 Estimation. Then, this load that was supposed to be delivered Tuesday, so within that, would have... I still wouldn't have gotten a paycheck, but I, I wouldn't have been in the negative. It would have paid all my necessary truck note and, and fuel and stuff, right? And I'm like, that's fine then, because in the next week, week I can really boogie and, and, you know, make up for it. But sitting here not making money, being told by my dispatch that, hey, you know, trust us, we're here to try and make you money. Being told, hey, we wouldn't have you drive 550 miles if it wasn't going to be worth it. And I trust this. And it's causing me to have financial ruin. Um, I finally, I had that really good week. I've already talked about it. I was able to pay up all my bills, late fees, get my bank out of the negative. And then I had two more weeks where they were decent enough to where I could keep up on my bills. And then I started having a little bit of a nest egg, just a little, right? And so I was in rebuild mode. And that's where I'm in, at rebuild mode, right? However... Now my car payment's due, and I only have like 700 of in savings. That's all I have in savings. And about 340 of that's going to have to go into my car payment. So, you know, that's going to leave me with what? Maybe four, almost 400. And I'm probably not going to get paid next week because I'm sitting on this load. And if I have to sit on this load until the 31st, then I'm not getting paid for another week. And I'm going more and more and more in the hole. I don't really honestly believe they're going to have me sit here until the 31st. I really don't. But that is my worst case scenario that I have to take into consideration. So, um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Because if I'm working for free and I'm not able to pay my bills, then my credit rating is getting ruined even worse. I'll lose my car. Which... I, there was only one bank out of like, I think it was like 52 banks that would give me a chance because I have bad credit and no payment history. So this car is a reliable car that's supposed to help me um, create a, uh, a payment history and also thereby helping my credit rating. If I lose this car, I'm never going to be able to finance anything ever again. Uh, and then I won't have a car. So... And even though I'm most of the time I'm not home to use that car, I still need a car. I cannot. I have no one I can rely on to drive me around, and uh, I don't want to have to constantly pay somebody else gas money and have to take time out of their day to go places that I need to go or maybe even want to go. I'll just be like in the water. So um, I have a real hard time sleeping when I'm worried about finances and it just it gave me so much time to just sit there and become more depressed 
And this is a depressing part of the video, so I put it on the end because no one's going to be watching this far. But it needs to be said just in case. Like, this is depressing. I got into truck driving because I was getting sick of living paycheck to paycheck and not having any type of an emergency fund. I have never had an emergency fund that got over $400. By the time it got to $400, something went wrong in my car and I had to use it. Because I have to have a car to go to work, right? Um, I was always living paycheck to paycheck. But at least my bills got paid. They might have got paid sometimes late, for sure. But, you know, I wasn't working and then not making anything. And then also having to owe money. So it's like I am paying to do this job and I can't afford that. There can be a lot of money to be made in lease. I don't want to make it sound like lease is bad for everybody because I see other prime drivers that are still kind of rookie drivers and shit they're making money they're doing fine I do not believe for an instant this is some type of thing on purpose I think it's just happens it's just a a weird strange circumstance and no one said that you know being a rookie driver is going to be easy I knew it was going to be like a struggle at first but I didn't think it would be I can't even pay my bills or afford to do this job because if I sit here until the 31st I won't be able to go home to vote or visit my friends and family I'll have to go on the road and I won't have any food or money to do that so I might have to just like what what am I gonna do so again that's a worst case scenario I really am trying to make this work but if I don't have money coming in while I am working no one can make that work. It's a good thing I don't have like a wife and kids to support. It's a good thing I don't have rent or a house payment. I've never had a job where I would work and owe the company money. And I don't think this is being done to me on purpose. I don't think I'm being singled out or anything like that. I don't want to make it sound like that. But I can't afford to keep going on like this. And it's really depressing and devastating to me to have given up so much to sacrifice to to follow this dream only for it to not pay me and then I owe it if I leave Prime which I don't want to do I like it here otherwise and I really enjoy this job oh yeah I was talking about I got into truck driving because I was sick of living paycheck to paycheck and not being able to pay off my debt collectors um they all gave me a break though because when they called me I started answering and telling them what's going on I said hey I'm not in a job right now. I'm going to truck driver's training. I won't be making very much money to pay you, but call me in August, or no, call me in October, and I will be in my own truck by then and establish, and I'll be making money. Call me then. Well, now they're calling me, and I can't answer the phone because I ain't got no money to promise them. I can't. I have no confidence in my paychecks that I'll get enough to be able to pay my bills and my bills are designed and I've said this before my bills are designed so that it's so easy for me to pay them and rack up money um, that I didn't think for an instant I'd be in this position I've been in my own truck since August it's now October and I have seven hundred dollars in to my name soon to only be four hundred once I pay my car payment which is due next week my Cable internet is due too, so that's another 160. Um, I could let that go, just call them and say, hey, I'll pay you next month. But am I going to have money to do that next month? I don't know. It's not a, a it's very shocking to me be, to be in this situation. Um, I keep thinking that if I had been able to go company like I had decided to do by the time I was done with training. If they weren't pulling this, well, you got to be a team driver if you want to um, be company. Unless, you know, you go if you go lease, you can be solo. Then I would have gone company. I would have said, you know what? Uh, I want to be in my own truck and I want to be company to start out. And I think that's the best way to do it while I'm establishing myself and getting, learning how to do things on my own and doing my own time management and all that. So, um, yeah, it's it's not been easy it's it sucks to finally be making like progress videos where like okay i got a good paycheck i got caught up everything that's happening the stress that i'm feeling i feel like i shouldn't have to feel it to this degree at all i knew i wasn't going to be rolling in um just 
becoming a millionaire or anything like that, but I knew, I, I felt like I should be making more consistent paychecks that's more than retail, which means that I should be fine with the bills that I have and the food that I need. Um, but yeah, I have hypertension, which is the leading silent killer, and I have a ton of stress now every day. I get stress headaches, and then it stresses me out more when I think about how I can't afford my medication and I can't afford to pay into insurance so that I could better afford my medication. That is not a good place to be in, but that's where I'm at. Um, I'm trying very much to trust my dispatch, but when things like this have happened already, since August once already, as far as, you know, I can't pay my bills on time and everything's late and I'm starving out here because I had to write them that. And now it's going to be happening happening again so soon, especially before I've had a chance to to save up to be able to afford even a week off. Um, it's just really, it's really upsetting. It's distressing. And I don't know what I'm going to do. My trainer, um, he left Prime. I'm not going to say where he went. Um, I was going to ask him if I can talk about it, but I'm just going to say that he left Prime and he encouraged me to do the same, but I just don't want to do it yet, you know, like, I like it, I genuinely like it here, that's the only, you know, I think things can be really good, it's just right now it's really very difficult struggle financially, the work I love, it's a great job, but... Hopefully I hear back from him today. In the meantime, I'm just going to chill and try to calm my mind down, try to get rid of the stress, but every hour I'm not rolling means I'm not making money and I'm getting further in debt with Prime and further in debt with other things, and I feel like I'm just going to lose everything that I've worked hard for, which is so precious little. So well, I guess that's that. I'm going to do my best to edit this up. Maybe I'll post this as is, or if I maybe I'll wait till tomorrow to see if there's some type of an update and I have better news that I get to keep, that I get to roll and make some money before um, Election Day. 